So I was on Amazon the other day and I was just kind of in the mood to buy like a bunch of really inexpensive fragrances and one that was kind of like at the top of the list, I think this was only like 10 or 15 bucks, is Nicole Miller for Men. This is a 1994 release. I looked at the note breakdown and I just said, why not? So I pulled the trigger. In today's video, I'm gonna be giving you my thoughts on this fragrance from the mid 90s, so make sure to stay tuned. I begin today's episode and I give you my thoughts on Nicole Miller for men. I've never tried this before. It does get compared to a Michael Kors fragrance. It also gets compared to Minotaur. I do want to start the video off by saying that if you're a fan of fragrance related content, please do consider supporting the channel by subscribing to it. Hit the bell icon so you can be notified whenever I do upload future videos to the channel. And of course, give this video a thumbs up. It would really mean a lot to me, especially if you took something of value from today's episode. Now, admittedly so, I've seen this fragrance out and about, you know, a few times in the past. I never actually pulled the trigger and finally, I ended up purchasing a bottle. I saw it online for a really good price. Obviously, you know, this fragrance has been around for a few decades now, so you can find it rather cheap online. And it's an amber woody fragrance and I'm looking at the notes. I see vanilla, apple, amber, sandalwood, leather. I said, hold on a minute, this can actually end up being really, really good. So I actually ended up purchasing it a few weeks ago and um, I spent a few days wearing it and I think I have a pretty good impression of it so far. In any case, I'm gonna talk to you about the smell in just a second. Let's go ahead and start things off with a quick look at the presentation. Now, right in the opening of this fragrance, you are going to get a pretty noticeable sweetness. And looking at the note breakdown, in addition to the apple and the vanilla and some of these other ingredients that are mentioned that are potentially sweet, there's also this note of honey. And I'm getting that from this fragrance. Now, it's not a photorealistic honey, right? So it's not going to smell like Back to Black by Killian Paris, right? That's probably one of the best honey-based fragrances. And I think there's another one by Naomi Goodsir called Ordusoreum, right? A lot of wonderful, wonderful honey-based fragrances out there. Uh, this is not one of them. <laughs> you do get the honey, but it doesn't smell like honey. It just comes across smelling rather sweet and ambery. So I do think that that honey accord, let's call it that, melds pretty nicely with the amber that's kind of residing in the dry down to give off like this gentle sweetness that I actually do quite enjoy. I also get this creamy tonka bean kind of a vibe. I also get that vanilla or what is trying to be passed off as vanilla in this fragrance. But again, in terms of the vanilla being used, it doesn't smell like a Parfum de Marly Carlisle. It doesn't smell like a uh, Spiritu Double Veni by Guerlain. There's a lot of benchmark vanilla fragrances out there. And uh, uh, obviously it's a $15 fragrance. It doesn't make sense to compare it to a $300 fragrance, right? But I'm just letting you know in terms of what you see in the note breakdown, is it accurately represented Yes, I just wouldn't expect the most realistic or organic variation of that ingredient that you do see in the note breakdown. So just take that into consideration. Now, in terms of some of the other ingredients that are in here, um, the sandalwood, for example, there is this smooth, creamy sweetness lingering underneath it all. In terms of the amber, if we're talking about like a vanilla dominant amber, yeah, I get that too. I don't get much of like a labdanum or benzoin or some of these other resinous ingredients that are kind of biblical in nature. I don't get that per se but I do get this sort of slightly fruity, slightly sweet, warm, woodsy fragrance. It does come across smelling rather synthetic, but I find the aroma to be rather pleasant. There's another reason why I really like this one, and it's because it actually reminds me of this aftershave that my barber uses. <laughs> so once I made that association, I said, you know what? It smells like I just got a fresh cut, right? So I do enjoy wearing it for that reason, especially if I just wanna 
keep that sensation going, right? We all know the feeling of getting a fresh haircut. I haven't had one in about a week and a half now, so I'm overdue, especially when you have a fade. It's easy to notice when you've been overdue for a new cut. But in any case, I do like that I was able to make that comparison. So for that reason, it does kind of give me the sensation of coming across well-groomed right? You know, you get a haircut, so on and so forth. So it's an amber woody fragrance on the fresher side of things. Um, it does smell like Minotaur. I'm going to be honest with you. And uh, the other Michael Kors fragrance that it was being compared to in an ambery bottle, um, it's been a while since I've smelled that fragrance and I do perceive it to be a little bit different from that. Um, but an amber woody fragrance, the honey, the apple, the vanilla, the amber, the sandalwood, um, a little bit of leather too, if I'm remembering correctly, even though I don't really get anything leathery. When I think of leather, I think of sometimes animalic, sometimes spicy, sometimes dark, uh, sometimes musky. If it's like a cashmere on or like a suede type of a leather, I don't get that from this fragrance, right? But I do get the sweetness with a woodiness. And of course, it's an amber woody classification. And I do think it, it falls quite true. Uh, as far as the uh, classification is concerned. In any case, if you have an extra 15 bucks laying around and you wanna smell pretty decent and you want a fragrance that is going to give you a bit more of a personality than the generic cheapy, which just smells oceanic, I think this one will probably give you a bit more pizzazz for your money. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. Now, first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, it's Fairly unique, all things considered, and the overall smell is pleasant. It's just a bit boring, right? So it comes across a bit uh, synthetic and a bit generic as well. Um, and it doesn't have any realistic qualities about it, but it does smell pleasant. And for the price that you pay, you know, there's really no harm in that, right? Try it for yourself and, you know, it's not gonna take much of a hit on your wallet for 15 bucks or whatever it's going for. I, I think that's what I paid for it, on Amazon at least. Longevity on this one was about five hours on my skin. Projection was okay for the first half hour of application. It became an elbows length scent right around hour four, a skin scent right around hour six. In terms of the versatility, I think this one is good for the hotter weather. Uh, even though the smell and the note breakdown and the classification makes you think, oh no, this is gonna be a cold weather fragrance, it's an amber woody. I think the lack of performance makes me feel inclined to wear this one in the hotter weather. And it also does give off like this well-groomed type of a vibe. And I would also say that this one is a bit masculine leaning. Uh, this one is great for anybody of any age. And I think this one can be worn more casually. I would go with something a bit more refined for like a formal occasion, something a bit more dressed up. In terms of the um, presentation, I think the presentation is pretty nice. Kind of cheap. I mean, I do like the amber hue of the bottle and the cap is pretty nice. It's plastic, but all things considered, nice distribution on the atomizer as well, as you can see. My final verdict on this fragrance is it's a decent cheapie. I don't think it's anything amazing. I think if you're looking for a specific vanilla-based fragrance or honey-based fragrance or apple-based fragrance, there's so many other fragrances I would recommend in this fragrance's place. But for what it's worth and the price that you're paying for it, I think it's a solid buy. Check it out if you can. I'm gonna leave links down below for your um, ease. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really hope you took something of value from today's episode. If you did, please do consider supporting the channel by subscribing to it. Hit the bell icon and give this video a thumbs up. Love you guys, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.